Hey everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight, checking out what's new in Annex 16. I am on an installed system. This is a Core i5 laptop with some older Intel hardware, video hardware. It's going to be a good tet show, good uh, system to show you what's new in Annex 16. Uh, first off, the kernel. We've got a 4.10, 4.4.10 kernel. Let's see here, uname slash r. There it is, 4.4.10 dash Annex kernel. Uh, that is included by default. We have auto selection of Broadcom drivers, uh, the so called proprietary WL Broadcom STA drivers. Uh, the system at boot, and actually the live USB at boot, will try to determine which driver to use for your Broadcom part automatically. Has some success with it. If you have problems, post put a post in the forums. We'd like to get that tool tweaked. Um, it is the easiest way to configure Broadcom drivers is not to have to configure Broadcom drivers. Uh, we have auto configuration of Intel driver acceleration, Intel video driver acceleration. What do I mean by that? Well, if you are a uh, Intel video chipset that is pre Sandy Bridge, which is actually getting to be fairly old at this point, but uh, if you are older than that, then you may find that uh, there has been some reports of screen tearing and things like that. And what our system, what the that does is, is it allows. I'm gonna go into the uh, xorg folder. It creates a special xorg file, xorg.com file, if your chip is old enough to. There we go. That's why I shouldn't talk and select folders at the same time. Uh, to enable the older acceleration method by default, the so-called UXA acceleration method. Um, you'll, you'll see a lot of videos on uh, out there right now about pe people saying, hey, you need to change your video acceleration settings. Well, we're tr the Annex guys are trying to do that for you, so you don't have to mess with it. Um, that is a great feature. Also, for you guys using Sissy Media or Sys Media, or however you want to say it, because I always say it wrong, uh, Annex unlike most other Debian distributions, and we just had this discussion in the forums, um, in fact does support Sissy Media. So if you've got a Sissy Media part, give Annex a try. Maybe it'll work for you. Now I understand there may be some parts that that doesn't work for, but we've got more support than Debian, so give it a try. There's always VESA if it comes to it. Uh, the Live Media has VirtualBox guest editions installed by default. So if you're running live in VirtualBox, or if you're rather if you're just running in VirtualBox at all, uh, the um, you're going to get all that screen resize goodness, uh, all the shared folder features with the host system. All that is set up by default. Uh, I can't show you in this video, but there is 64-bit UEFI boot support. There's also 32-bit boot support on the live USB, but the installer for now is 64-bit UEFI only, which is going to cover like 99.9% .9 of the UEFI systems out there. Uh, there are some oddball 32-bit systems that we're still working on. Uh, let's see, live menu. Okay, let's crack open Control Center and see what's new in the Control Center. Uh, first of all, I'll point out in the Conky, you've got a couple new options in Conky. It's going to tell you your resolution. It's going to tell you the DPI setting. That's your font DPI or your font size. Um, the live media actually has options for setting the default, the default font size, and it uses like 1 or 1 1.2 or numbers like that. 1 is the default 96 DPI. This is the default in most Linux distributions. <sighs> it's going to tell you what that is. 96 DPI is the font. Also, you notice there's an auto mount. This is one of the top five annoyances, and it's been addressed this time. Check out my video, Top 5 Annoyances in Annex 15. There's a nice new solution for auto mounting. Thanks to the guys for getting that put in there. Uh, again, the rest of us mostly just your usual conky displays. Prettied up a little bit with the network monitors. Uh, it, it's nice. Okay, so on here we got our usual choose wallpaper. All the, these apps are more or less the same. Uh, as before. Preferred application works a little better for actually getting the default apps installed or um, selected for what you want to use. Uh, it's not 100% perfect, but it's, it's better than it has been. Uh, system, uh, you got Synaptic for managing packages. You got the Meta Package Installer, which has some new features in it. The Meta Package Installer not only has uh, popular apps or apps you might want to have. Oh, look, Spotify, cool. Um, Google Chrome, if you're running 64-bit, obviously not going to be on 32-bit because Google screwed us, us 32-bit guys. 
uh, development. You got development tools. Yeah, there's some docs that work rather well. Uh, we have a kernel section. If you want to install latest kernel, whether an Annex or a Debian or a, or even an older kernel, we got some fallback kernels. This is an easy place to do it. Check that out. Graphics. We got some nice graphics stuff set up here ahead of time. If you want to, we got the the so-called non-free area is mostly video codecs. These are some oddball real audio, a couple other video codecs. Most importantly, though, libdvd CSS2 for DVD support from Deb Multimedia. This is the way you want. This app is the way you want to install things from Deb Multimedia because this is going to pull in the stuff from Deb Multimedia. It's going to enable it to install. It's going to disable it when you're done. You don't want to leave Deb Multimedia enabled. You're going to see some YouTubers out there tell you you want to have Deb Multimedia enabled. But Deb Multimedia enabled, if you're not on pure Debian, will break something eventually. You heard it here. I back it up. I recommend it in the MX forums and in the Annex forums. There's nothing wrong with Deb Multimedia taken in moderation. Guys do a good service over there. But there are some cross-compatible libraries that as soon as you get away from pure Debian, you could conceivably run out and run into problems. Leave it disabled. Install your app. Disable it. End of tirade number 5,722. Uh, team viewers in the remote access. <laughs> you, you know, they, they claim they haven't been hacked, but who knows. Um... Uh, screencast, simple screen recorders here. Uh, OBS is actually available in the MX test repositories, which are configurable in Annex, but not enabled by default. So if you want to give OBS a try, fine. Uh, I would figure most of you OBS guys are probably not going to be on old hardware because of the OpenGL support required. I actually can't run OBS on my Iron Lake Intel laptop here uh, that I use for screen recording. So, you know, okay. Um, um, it's not all about the horsepower, guys, because I can run it on a crap top laptop that costs like $100 from Walmart, but it has OpenGL 3 support, so OBS runs on that. doesn't run on my Core i5 with 8 gigs of RAM. runs on the piece of crap with 2 gigs of RAM and uh, a 16 gig SD, S SSD. The world ain't fair sometimes. Um, at any rate, uh, another tirade. Sorry, guys, it's late. Uh so yeah, so you got the you got the kernels, you got a lot of nice options in the meta package installer. Uh, in the con uh, uh, continuing through the control center, you can choose startup services. I'm not going to click this because it, it it takes a little while to come up. Uh, you can edit some configuration files. This is going to be things like your display manager configuration, which honestly you really shouldn't need the touch all that often in Annex. A um, few other things, your sort your source list. I'll go ahead and click it. Your sources lists, if you want to, you can see that. Uh, there are SID and testing repositories pre-configured but not enabled for you. And yes, Dead Multimedia is here if you really want to turn the thing on. Uh, the MX repositories are here if you want to turn them on. Seduction repositories. Some oddball ones here if you want the latest Firefox is there. Also, installing Firefox from the Meta Package installer will install the latest Firefox and enable that repository so you'll get the latest Firefox if you want it that way. Uh, moving on to network, you've got Cine for editing the, or helping you configure the underlying Debian networking system. This is a fantastic system. Uh, it will get you booted up fast, and it's really nice if you're not if you're on wireless. It's really nice if you're not going from network to network. If you're using more than one wireless network on a routine basis, go ahead and configure with with, with Wicked or YCD, however you want to say it. Do yourself a favor. YCD handles multiple profiles a bit easier than Cine does, ah, which doesn't handle multiple profiles, actually. <clears throat> so, yeah, so you get your option. YCD works just fine. If Cine's pre-configured, you can set up a different network in, in YCD. It, it's actually what I do, and it works fairly well. Uh, in session, we have uh, there's not much change here from previous versions. Setting screen resolution, changing your slim, uh, slim is the uh, display manager uh, login screen. A lot of people call it. Uh, you can you can change that. You can change your keyboard layout. Screen blanking time for those of you that have issues with your screen turning off when you don't want it to, you can do that here. User desktop session is one you want to configure all your desktop session settings, including the common startup file for whatever WM you choose. This startup file will process. Uh, so there's a lot of pre-commented stuff in here. If you want to enable, say, the network monitor in the toolbar or a clipboard manager, or if you want to fire up connect shares automatically on login, the search bar utility, uh, which is kind of cool actually. You highlight text and then click the thing, click the button, and it 
will search the, inter the appropriate website for you. Keyboard indicator, that sort of thing. This is where you want to do that. And also the desktop session settings, like if you want to, uh, mostly you won't have to touch this, but if you want to set up things like XDG auto start support, which is what most systems actually use to auto start files you can enable that here a lot of WM oriented systems window manager oriented systems don't do that uh, by default um, so it's off by default but you can turn it on and you can also leave the startup file loading and set the screen blanking time in here and also you can t you can tell Conky to load or not uh, in this file it's it's really one-stop shopping for your configuration um, disks we have a configure auto mounting tool this will let you configure auto mounting. Ha! The orange and black USB key. This is probably the number one feature requested by Annex users is the fact that we want to be able to auto mount our devices. Now, interestingly enough, a lot of Annex users said, no, I don't want to auto mount my devices. Hence the configuration. Annex gives you the choice. Uh, bring choice back to your operating system. Use Annex. So I'm going to pop in a USB key. And this doesn't have to be open for this to work. You see it pops open in the default rocks file manager. That is the the item. And it will pop up in whatever file manager is uh, defined as your default in the preferred applications that I showed you earlier. So that's pretty cool. And then we got the USB tool down here at the bottom for unplugging devices. You gotta click OK a few times, but at least it gives you the warnings that it's good to go and you're done, the drives are cleaned up, the mount points are gone, if I go to slash media you'll find that the mount points are gone uh, trust me they're gone, these are my own system drives the, the mount point is, is, has been removed for that system device okay uh, again uh, uh, Annex 2 SB and UNet Boot are installed here and on the hardware tab you can actually set the font size, now I mentioned this 96 DPI you can change that here I'm not going to change that while I'm running the video because I discovered that it actually screws up my recording uh, when it goes through the gyrations to change the DPI. Uh, so I'm not going to do that in the video. But give it a try, uh, particularly if you've got a smaller screen or a high DPI screen or even a small screen that's not high DPI. I've actually found I kind of like 120 DPI on my 11-inch monitors uh, on some of my uh, micro laptops. Uh, so you know, check it out. It's, uh, it's fun. It'll change the text size. Uh, and it'll actually also scale the conky so it still fits on your screen correctly. Uh, the rest of this is pretty much as Andix before, adjusting your mixtures, testing the sound, setting a default sound card if you have more than one. I currently have more than one in here at the moment because my Snowball microphone shows up as a sound card. So it's here. You can set things as the default. Yes, quit. Thank you. Uh, that's what's new in the Annex Control Center. As far as fix, oh, there's one other item in the Annex Control Center that I forgot to mention. Is another one of the top five annoyances. It, on the hardware tab, there is a new mouse configuration tool. Now, it looks just like the old mouse configuration tool, except this one will remember. <laughs> this one will remember. This one will remember your settings from start to fence, from start to start. See, it's here, so I'm going to revert that. Actually, I'm going to put that back to 10. Good to go. Okay. Huh. Uh, for those of you that uh, want to know, I will remind you that Annex is, in fact, System D free. And by that, I mean it's System D free. It's not in here. If you stick with the Jesse repository, you will have, should not have any trouble being system D free. Are we Devwan? No, we're Debian. It's still Debian. The guys are recompiling. The guys over at Annex are recompiling uh, certain packages that Debian has decided will have a system D dependency. They're just recompiling them so they don't and hosting them in the Annex system D deposit repository. So if you want to be system D free and you want to run Debian, you behoove, you owe it to yourself to try Annex. And uh, if if you know how to make that work with your SysV, Sys5, I don't know what to call it, SysV, I guess, uh, scripts, all that's still there, ready to go. For those of you that want to avoid SysMD, again, we are avoiding SysMD. However, if you want to try, we are using the regular UDEV uh, uh, package. 
if you want to try EU Dev, which you may or may not know is a fork of EU Dev that in the the guys over I believe some Gen two guys actually got started that were is not is they're keeping you keeping it up to date so that it doesn't become system D dependent. That is available. We found some pro, we tried to use we found in testing some 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 odd startup delays. The guys the guys over at EU Dev have been working on that. Uh, we made some traction, but they did they did stick with UDev for the default Andix release. How, however, that is an under EU Dev is an active development. I encourage you to check it out. It's pretty nice. Um, you want to get into that? Check it out in the forums. There's a couple forum posts to do that. Again, it's Debian, no System D. Just reminding you in case you missed it earlier. No System D. Da, 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 da. No system D. Special repository. As as apps are found, they are adding them. Uh, usually pretty quick. They're they're getting to the point now where the most common stuff is 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 kept up with. Two more items I want to show you before we call it a night on the what's new. Um, one is not really new. I just want to remind you here is if you want to try one of the other desktop options, you can do that by selecting one. I am going to select Space Flexbox. You can see the oper the system shuts down and gives us the new Space Flexbox. I can go back to IceWM if I wish, but I'm not going to right now. You can see everything's still running, and I actually haven't crashed the video doing that. It cracks me up that I can change the desktop, but I can't set the DP set the DPI. Um, so that is so that that feature is there. One other feature to show you is in the flux in the settings. Now the various the various window managers have their own themes, but there are small, medium, and large themes. We have Annex. See, we have Radiant here is the is the default. Radiant Large, Radiant Regular, Radiant Medium. So if I go Radiant, me you see the text shrinks. If I go Radiant Large, you can see it gets very large. If I go Radiant Medium, you see it scales back just a little bit. So we have large, small, and medium uh, uh, styles of most of the common themes that you might want to try in the various window managers. There's not quite as not quite all of them defined that way in ISWM, I don't believe. Let's actually go back to ISWM and see. I'll show you what I mean. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Rocks ISWM is the default. Everything's popping back up. We're going to go to settings, themes. And I believe clear blue is the default. Okay, we do have small, medium, and large for all these. I'll go to large on this one. See, really big. It really nice. It's nice and spread out. So you know, it's your preference. It's choice. Uh, yeah, not all of the themes have those options, but several of the of the more popular default ones do. So uh, let's try. Let's see if I remember right. Ice Gill is a rather nice theme. Yeah, there we go. That's 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 pretty nice. Actually, there's a little bug down here with this icon. Don't worry that it it it's it it keeps the color from when it started. When you log out, log back in, that that color will be match the rest of it. So that is what's new in Annex 16. For tips, tricks, how tos, head over to annex.mepis.org or throw up a post at annex.freeforms.org. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.